We already had a look at the new Gilead Liquid 120, really not the best AIO. Sure, the quality of the red was fine, and that little temperature sensor was a quite cool idea, especially because it is completely softwareless. But the performance just wasn't it. it. It was mediocre for a 120 AIO at best. But that wasn't necessarily because the product line is bad. 120 mil form factor is just bad in general. So let's step it up. This is the Gelid Liquid 240 with the same 51 RPM quick PVM fan pushing up to 61.9 CFM and up to 1.67 mm of H2O. And the same copper base with a water block on top that features its own water temperature sensor. With the freaking integrated screen in the center of this obviously necessary ARGB infinity mirror. Sorry for the interruption, but after we released the Gilead Liquid 120 review, uh, Gilead contacted us regarding something I said in the original video. I said that this was a uh, water temperature sensor, and apparently that's not true. Uh, they told me it's a CPU surface sensor, which can't be true either. A uh, surface temperature sensor uh, would need to be touching the surface to, to get the temperature. So that's not really true either. The only way of doing it would be from the bottom and nobody's doing that. And from the top, you would either cripple the performance as hell or you would, yeah, you would cripple the performance. I followed up and I requested something to verify where that temperature sensor is without pulling everything apart. And apparently it is sitting on the cold plate, on, uh, on the base. It is not inside the water, but it is definitely not touching the CPU either. So this is not a surface temperature sensor. It is the cold plate, the upper side of the cold plate, if, if that makes any sense. So uh, it behaves, I really need to say it behaves like uh, a water temperature sensor in, um, in the way of how it displays the temperature or what temperature it displays. It is not spiking. The surface will, would be spiking and the water would not be spiking. And in this case, it's more of a, of a water temperature sensor than any, anything else, but it is not technically one. So I wanted to correct this. And in every instance where I say it's a water temperature sensor, it's not. It's kind of a surface temperature sensor. It's kind of a base temperature sensor, it's something in the middle. Um, but it's definitely not just a su surface temperature sensor and it's also definitely not a raw water temperature sensor. So keep that in mind, it's displaying something in between the two. Uh, it won't change anything about the AIO and I can guarantee you it is behaving exactly like the water is behaving inside of the loop. So for me, it's still kind of a water temperature sensor, but technically it is not. And Gilead requested that we uh, rectify this, so we do. So ju please just keep this in mind for the rest of the video. Thank you. The tubes are about 40 centimeters long, if you measure them, you know, very generously. But most importantly, it's not 120 millimeter anymore. Let's take a closer look at the benchmarks because I truly hope that the additional red space can push this AIO up the benchmark chart. Allowing both fans to spin at their max rate at 1800 RPM, the Liquid 240 managed to keep the 135 watts load of the 3900X at 50.2 degrees C above ambient. Finally, finally a result that we can work with. Although this is not quite the upper third of our list, it did manage to outperform quite a few other things like Cooler Master's ML240 Illusion, ASI's X240 and Asa Blizzard 240. And maybe or maybe not, NZXT's X52, but back then our room thermometer displayed only single digits, so I, I really couldn't say. But still, going up from there, there are only the Xilance LQ240 Pro and Arctic Liquid Freezer 240 left in the winning category of 240mm AIOs. And compared to air coolers, it did manage to land a few nice hits, like for example Arctic's Freezer 50, the dual fan Noxia NHD12L, or or be Quiet's Dark Rock Pro 4. So far, not bad, and only a few contestants that are still able to beat it in the same category, either size or price. But what about the noise 2 performance once we start lowering the fan speed of both fans, measuring the noise at each measuring point? Over here, it's rather interesting. 
right off the bat, Gilead's 240mm AO definitely beat the crap out of ASUS Blizzard 240 and alias size X240. And here is the Gilead Liquid 120, just as a reference so that we all know how much of a difference an additional 120mm fan spot can truly make. For the Cooler Master Illusion, however, it's not such a black and white thing. Sure, the liquid managed to keep it slightly cooler at max speed, however, the Cooler Master Illusion was significantly quieter once both were at the same temperature, resulting in a slightly better noise-to-performance ratio. The same goes for the Xilence AIO, which is just slightly off-shifted due to it being slightly better in, in yeah, everything. The only outliner here is Arctic's Liquid Freezer 240, which, if you have seen our review, yeah, um, this one has a pump with a quite uh, loud noise, so it never, it just never really reached any enjoyable points noise-wise. So it, it's a defect. But for the Liquid 240, it's kind of a nice ratio. Not quite Xilinx Elko 240 Pro, but not that far behind. But now let's take a closer look at the AIO itself. And yes, if you have already seen the Gilead Liquid 120 review, you can skip to this timestamp because I'm going to repeat every goddamn word I said in the video I recorded like 30 minutes ago. The Liquid 240 comes in the usual Gilead box. A bit of imagery, some specs and a product description, which we will not read out loud this time, it's just, I won't repeat that, but it is, it is. 5 out of 10 RG Pubebo, it's, it's, it's horrible. Inside we'll get everything the usual AIO comes with. The AIO itself, a fan mounting hardware for Intel LGA 1700, 1200, every 1150, 1366, 2011 and 2066 or everything from AM5 going back until AM2, and a tube of thermal paste. In order to install the water block, we need to take either the AMD or Intel brackets, depending on your system, and screw them in from the bottom using the tiny screws included in one of the bags. Then, for AMD, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and backplate. From there, take the included backplate and slide these inverted screws into the holes marked with the socket that you are using and secure them using the wide plastic holders. After that, rip off the tape to make sure the whole thing sticks to your motherboard and position it behind. In case you're on AM5, you can skip all of this because the original backplate is staying where it is. From the front, take the long screws, slap a spring onto each with the washer on top and screw the whole thing down using a cross pattern. And of course, don't forget the thermal paste. Over on Intel, we need to do a similar thing, but the holes in the backplate are on a different position, so we need to make sure to use the other holes with the other plastic holders. But from there, same procedure. Position behind the motherboard, screw, spring, washer combo from the front, and there you go. The fan included with the Liquid series is an unnamed PVM-controlled fan spinning at up to 1800 RPM while it's pushing 61.9 CFM at 1.67 mm of H2O, a number I find surprisingly low considering how dense this radiator is. But hey, at least the frame on the fan is built in a way that no air can escape around it, which is obviously necessary for radiator operations. But let's talk about all of the ARGB thing because it, that's kinda interesting. Both the fans and pump ARGB are controlled using a 3 pin controllable connection, so you can do whatever you want inside of your own software. And by the way, it doesn't look bad, it's it's bright, no obvious LEDs, they did quite a good job here. The magic of the integrated mini monitor in the center of the pump starts to shine once the pump is running. Connect the pump using the 3 pin fan header, which you should do anyway, you don't want to kill your system, and boom, monitor starts up. This thing can display the usual two digits indicating a temperature, but it's not the CPU temperature as you might believe, it's solely the water. That's also why it can be slightly deceiving, don't get me wrong, it's knowing the exact water temperature is a very very good thing. It, it kinda gives you the very best indication of how things are running. But if you do not know that, or you, if you do not know that the difference between the water and the CPU can be 40, 50 degrees C, then yeah, you might believe that things are running fine while they are tr not fine, nothing is fine. So just make sure to know that it is normal to not see numbers bigger than 40, 42, 38 degrees C, even if the CPU is already thermal throttling really, really hard. So, the good and the bad. Let's start with the good one. The tubes are longer, but they are still quite short at 40 centimeters, and they still feel incredibly cheap. I hate that material. It... 
The performance has gotten quite a lot better, and it landed pretty close to the relatively good 3 to 40 AIOs that we have. Except for the Liquid Freezer 240. It's, it's just generally a monster, and it's always unfair if I compare anything to it. And one very positive thing I kind of forgot to mention in the last video is that the whole water temperature thing is completely software-less. You, com you connect it, and it's working. And that's extremely easy, and it doesn't require you to install NZXT Cam or... Corsair, I don't know what, and all of that crap crap software here, it just works. Sure, you still need some sort of software if you want to control the whole ARGB thing, but Get it also includes a little controller, so you can use this one and in case you don't have anything on your motherboard, and you could theoretically run the whole thing without any software at all. So, for who is this? If you like the whole RGB thing and you are a fan of displaying your water temperature, then there is nothing wrong with this for things like 13th gen i7, 7700X, for those types of, of CPUs, this will do fine. Just keep in mind that the tubes are relatively short and they do not feel like upper shelf things. It's rah. But if you can live with the fact that there are still 240mm AIOs that outperform it by a bit or by a bit more, and you are really into that water temperature sensor, then sure this thing might be for you. And this should be all for Gilead and their new Liquid 240. I'm just glad that this one was able to get some sort of acceptable numbers. At this point, a huge thank you to them for providing it to us. And on a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel memberships, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to pay somebody to rewrite all of Gilead's product descriptions. Because if I have to read another text describing an average 240 AIO as a pro gamer ultimate overkill overclocking liquid cooling technology device, I will harm myself. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, take a look at our take on the Xilence LQ240 Pro. Slightly better in performance, but a lot better in tube quality. Anyway, hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.